Hey guys, welcome back to another Han Sealer video. If you're new here, I'm Han. I'm a freelance graphic designer, creative director, and brand designer based in France. And this channel is all things to do with graphic design and running my own freelance graphic design business. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you something really cool. This is targeted more to my designer audience. So if you're a graphic designer, I think you're going to find this very helpful. I'm going to be showing you how to use the Adobe Illustrator 2024 mockup beta. So this is kind of a tutorial and we're going to go through and see what we can and can't do with the mockup beta. As it suggests, the beta means it's still beta testing. So it still has some work to be done and you'll see that in the video, there are some areas where it kind of slips up. But this video is just a little walkthrough to show you how to use it. So I'm not going to waste much of your time. Let's jump straight into the video. So here I am in Adobe Illustrator. This is actually the 2023 version, which is why when I opened up the file, I could not find the mockup beta anywhere. And then I realized, so then I swatched over to Adobe Illustrator 2024. So now I'm in the correct version. I went on to Unsplash, which is a copyright free site. And I found a bunch of images that can be used as potential mockups. And I also went and found a bunch of my old fun designs that I did as passion projects. So I'm I'm going to be putting these fun designs that I did onto these different mockups and seeing what works, what doesn't work, where it slips up, where it looks really cool and what we can use the mockup beta for. So I'm going to start with this cup because I think it's really cool and I love the idea of having this pattern going all the way around. So what you do is you select your image and your vector artwork on top and you go to object mockup beta and then you click it and this little pop-up will pop up and it basically is a little tutorial video showing you how to use it so you can watch that. And you also have these various things where you can edit it on a canvas or you can actually buy the license to use those existing mockups that they have in Adobe Illustrator. I'm not going to be doing that because I already have these images. So I'm now going to try and play and see what I can do. So resizing it was really easy, but as you can see, it still looks very flat. It's missing something. And that's because it hasn't been multiplied onto the image. So I quickly went into transparency and went into multiply and it brought out all the beautiful shadows and highlights in the cup. So that made it look a lot more realistic. The next one I decided to do was the cap and use a distinct Seekers logo. I did this logo years ago, oh my goodness. So we're going to repeat the process, select both the image and the vector, go to object, select mockup beta, and then we make it and we can resize it. And then don't forget to multiply it again onto the image so that it picks up all the shadows. Very quick and easy and simple. So it doesn't seem to have any problems with simple graphics on white. So let's try something a bit more complicated. I'm going to try to put a raster based image, a photograph onto the billboard. So we're going to repeat the process. So let's just wait for it to generate the mesh. Okay, I was right, it didn't work. It says mockup currently lacks support for raster artworks effects and some objects types, which may lead to mismatched appearances. So it did not pick up the photograph in this image. So I've gone and I've taken it off and I'm just going to put the vector on. Let's see how that translates onto the billboard. So let's make the mockup better again. And let's see what happens. Okay, so it has changed it. It's gotten, it looks a bit strange. So I've rotated it slightly. You can rotate it as much times as you want and it'll try and keep in the perspective as much as possible. So very simple. Let's move on now to a tote bag. You might recognize this logo from a very popular YouTube video of mine, which I'll link up here if you want to check it out. So let's multiply it on. There we go. I think that worked out really nicely, actually. It would be so cool. You can put a pattern on to something as well. I think as long as it's vector based, it will work. Let's try a cushion now. I also did this planted pretty logo years ago. Oh my goodness, it's so old. Okay, so as you can see, again, it seems to have problems with the full bleed mockups. So here, it actually puts it on two separate layers. The logo's on one layer and the background's on another layer. And so if we multiply it, we can see it a lot clearer with the shadows and the highlights. But as you can see, if I try to resize it, it just doesn't pick it up. And if I take it all the way to the edge, you can see here it's actually like not, it hasn't fully bled all the way over the edge of the cushion. So it obviously has some trouble picking up where the object starts and finishes. So yeah, I wouldn't suggest doing full bleed things with this mockup beta. I would probably go into Photoshop for those types of mockups if I need it done. Okay, so now we're moving on to a t-shirt. And as you can see here, it's actually picked up the man as part of the t-shirt. Well, 
the mock-up. So it's obviously separated the foreground and the background and the man's in the foreground. So his entire body has become the mask of where it would drop the artwork. So that's kind of not cool, but it's not a train smash because we can just shrink the size of the logo onto the shirt. Now, the next thing I want to try is trying to use a pattern full bleed on the t-shirt. So we're obviously having trouble with the full bleed. So as you can see here, it's not differentiating between the front of the shirt and the back of the shirt. And it's also having trouble bleeding over to the edges. It's close, but it's, it's okay, it's not close. <laughs> it's pretty bad. So I would have to do something like that definitely on Photoshop. I would not be doing those on Illustrator. It just looks too messy. So instead, we're going to try something else. We're going to duplicate a logo multiple times and see what happens that way, if it'll take the curves of the shirt. Okay, so it did work. Okay, so it looks strange, but that's because it hasn't been multiplied. So we've multiplied the transparency now, which looks a lot better because it picks up those creases in the shirt. And now we can rearrange. And I think this actually looks quite cool. And it's definitely picking up a lot better than the full bleed. So I'm actually kind of impressed with that one. Now, let's go back to this billboard. I want to see what it looks like. Obviously, we're having trouble with the full bleed. Let's see if we can add in the background onto the billboard. So if I had to quickly just mock it up myself, I would have just drawn a rectangle at an angle. <laughs> but we're going to do it in the mock-up beta to see how it actually works. So I've released the mock-up beta and now I have redone it. And as you can see, it's picking up the entire billboard again, like the man above, the man in the t-shirt. This has done the exact same thing where it's picking up the foreground versus the background. So the entire billboard, not just the visual space is being picked up. So that's kind of a bummer, but hopefully it'll be improved. So let's just go in and manually change the billboard and make it look nice and pretty. There you go. So I think this kind of has to have a bit of manual labor as well on top of it. I would not rely solely on the mock-up beta to do everything, but as designers, it's not a train smash. It's just nice to have these tools that kind of help. So now I'm going to move back onto this cup because I decided, let's see if we can make some changes to this. You know, if I can actually work straight on this. So I have just gone through and created a little clipping mask and put a background color. And now I'm just using the brush tool to draw some leaves to make it look on brand. <laughs> it's quite funny. I mean, Spice Rack is a spice company. I can't imagine drinking spices, but anyway. Okay, maybe it's like a, a chai or something. Chai latte. <laughs> I don't know. So now I'm going to mock it up and make it look like a cute little advert or of some sort. So now I want to pick up the yellow that's in the original full color pattern. So I've just edited the pattern, taken the pattern elements out and then ink dropped the yellow. And now I'm looking for a font and trying to figure out what to say. Like I'm new or try me, try me I'm new. That'll be quite good. So let's do that. And now I feel like we need to add something to the bottom as well, just to like anchor everything because it I don't know, it feels like it's floating. Well, it is floating, but we need to put something on the bottom. I'm not sure what I want to say, so I've just put messaging here for now. I don't know. Let's make a make a point of doing like new biodegradable cups or something. Biodegradable stuff is very booming at the moment. Uh, like eco design in graphic design is definitely one of the 2024 trends that are going to be coming out in graphic design. So yeah, let's bring a note to that. So new biodegradable packaging. Let's put it back in the little bubble to match the top of the design, just so that there's some consistency throughout it. And it also matches the rounded edges that I've used in the pattern for the background. And there you go. So we've got a cute little advert that we've mocked up using mock-up beta. Another thing I do want to try is I'm going to go through and just use my pen tool and add a background color to this cute little cushion picture and then I just multiplied it as well just so it looks a bit more natural and that actually looks really good I'm very impressed with that obviously having a stark white pillow is not most ideal you could just go around with your pen tool around the cushion and then multiply that color onto the cushion and then put the logo on it that would also work so that way you can still edit your colors without having to go into photoshop you can do it all on illustrator 
Personally, I think I will be using the mock-up better going forward for very simple things. If I don't feel like opening Photoshop and then doing something on there and then putting it across into Illustrator, if it's something really simple, but if it's any sort of complicated design, anything that has full bleed, anything that is, yeah, as I said, complicated, I will be doing that in Photoshop and then bringing it across to Illustrator, which is what I usually always do. I'm very excited for all the software and programs that are coming out now, especially with the rise of AI and how that is helping a lot of the software. It can be quite scary, but I think when it's used correctly, it can be actually very interesting and help with your time and your workflow in your day-to-day -day life. So this is the video. It's very short and sweet and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more tutorial videos like this, please let me know. This is kind of the first tutorial video that I've ever done in terms of graphic design software. And I have some ideas of doing like Photoshop tutorials, InDesign tutorials, Illustrator tutorials, you know, how I set up my documents for print, how I set them up for web and all that jazz. So if you have any questions specifically about certain tools in any of the programs that you want to learn, or have a quick tutorial on like this one, just drop it in the comments, let me know if you guys are keen for that. So yeah, anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and drop a comment. Anyway, I hope you have a lovely day wherever you are in the world and I'll see you soon. Bye.